bass great Kenny Passarelli tells us if he'd ever play with Elton John again, and we look back at the album Blue Moves, his second with Elton. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Music. You know, it's not every day you get a chance to sit down and kind of hang out with one of the great bass players of all time. He always was one of my favorites, like a great fretless bass player. You know, before Elton John, he had played with Stephen Stills, Rick Derringer, Dan Fogelberg, and then there was Joe Walsh doing that great Rocky Mountain Way, which he played on and co-wrote. But I had to tell him that Blue Moves by Elton John was one of the most underrated albums in my collection. That is such a major compliment. And I got to tell you, when it came out, it got shafted by the critics we uh you know he i think he might have made a mistake with the, with the second single but i mean sorry seems to be the hardest word was a giant single but we also at that session we recorded don't go breaking my heart which so that band at that particular time recorded a song that was not didn't it didn't make sense for don't go breaking my heart to be on that record it was too happy mm -hmm. the record was really about breaking up a marriage breaking up a, a songwriters the, the two of them everything was folding at that particular time and so it had a mood to it that don't go breaking my heart was not going to work but that band recorded don't go breaking my heart at eastern sound and that to this day is one of the most played records of elton john's yeah. career that's roger and it's the original blue moves the elton john band at that at 1976 and it was done in Canada, and uh, J it was James Newton Howard's first big break. I think Ray Cooper had mentioned Alton, give this guy a shot, he's an incredible arranger. Yeah. And so what it, he did the strings on Don't Go Breaking My Heart, and that's what launched James in many ways too. Again, Alton's always been responsible for pushing people out forward. I'm just kind of curious, if Elton was nostalgic and wanted to get that band, I know Rogers passed on, would you ever do that again? I do it in a New York minute, and I got to tell you, the reason I always thought, I know he's he's talking about slowing down. I know he's going to have a book that's going to be coming out next year, and in his interview, I just read that the book begins at Dodger Stadium. That's really? How the book starts off, okay? Which was at the highest and the lowest. He yeah. was at the highest, the biggest star in the world. We're playing Dodger Stadium, and he tried to you know kill himself a couple days before the show he was at a very low point personally and psychologically and all kinds of stuff he was just going through a million changes so i read or i saw the interview and he says i'm i'm doing a book and my book's going to come out next year and it starts with dodger stadium and then reflects back and forth so yes i would i i thought at some point with him doing the million dollar piano and maybe some of these concept sort of ideas that the idea that steely dan's out on the road and then with their fans you you know you you participate in what the set list is going to be or they're going to go out and do asia a tour just doing one one record i know for a fact right before glenn fry passed away the eagles were going to do just the hotel california tour yeah that was scheduled and that you know so why not do blue moves why not do Rock of the Westies? Why not? I mean, Ray Cooper, everybody except for Roger, unfortunately. Yeah. But I don't know. I, you know, I've seen Elton several times over the years, but just for, just for quick chat, mm -hmm. I have had no contact with him, other than that. And I'm very, I never really try to push to see people when they're in town on gigs, unless I feel it's, you know, it's appropriate because I know how much pressure is on. And the last time I saw Elton really chatted with him was when he was here with Billy Joel. And this has been about four years ago. Mm -hmm. And so I, I kind of avoid, I don't push myself in, yeah. that, in that way. On August 13th, the Colorado Music Hall of Fame will tip their hat to Kenny Passarelli, as well as the other members of Barnstorm, Joe Walsh. Also, they're going to honor Dan Fogelberg, the famous Caribou Ranch, and a host of others. We'll have a lot more of our interview with Kenny Passarelli. He was an interesting, very generous man to sit down with. You know, he basically wanted you to ask anything, and those are the best types of interviews. He's comfortable in his skin. I'm John Bowden. Make sure you comment on our videos, share our videos, and subscribe to our channel. There's also links below to our Facebook and our Twitter groups and all that stuff. And as I mentioned, we'll have more from Kenny Passarelli coming up next week. This is Rock History Music.